and welcome back to another uh, edition, a program on the Bible Wheel. And uh, we're going to move on uh, within the 7th century. We're going to move on to the Byzantine Empire and what was going on uh, in the empire at the time. Uh, but before we start, uh, there was uh, I needed to remind you concerning uh, the book of Judges, the seventh book, the book of Judges, as well as uh, the seventh prophetic book. Uh, Joel mentioned uh, repenting from serving uh, other gods and turning to God. And uh, in the book of Judges, there were many instances where uh, Israel, Israel, the Israelites, the children of Israel, uh, turned from serving gods uh, to serving the true God, and then vice versa, and turning from the true God and serving other gods. And the seventh century, uh, in 622, around that time, that's when uh, Islam was born, and they actually uh, got rid of the other gods in the in the Kaaba, and I don't know whether they kept one idol or uh, they got rid of all the idols. I'm not sure, but they, uh, they uh, claim to serve uh, the one "quote unquote" true God, but it's not it's not the God of the Bible, though. But that movement started and it spread, and I give you. Uh, the reason uh, how it goes along with the in within the seventh century and how it conflicts with the Byzantine Empire and so on. And I'm gonna move on. Another thing I want to mention was uh, what is found in the seventh chapter of Romans. Yes, uh, the seventh. Uh, is the inner wheel of the book of Romans. So it's the seventh uh, spoke or chapter within the book of Romans, which is related to uh, the seventh book, Judges and Joel, and possibly even Galat uh, Colossians. Uh, well, it says uh, these two verses are quite significant. It does say uh, in Romans 7, 23 and 24, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And this you're going to be reminded later on in a few minutes. Okay, who is Heraclius? Heraclius was, uh, I believe, a general, uh, but before him, uh, he was a general for the Byzantine Empire, and he was in Africa at the time. And uh, Maurice was an emperor in the late, late uh, uh, sixth century, and he got assassinated by his successor, uh, Focus. And uh, Phocas uh, happened to have raped uh, one, a nobleman's uh, wife, Photius's wife. And uh, the news reached Heraclius uh, while he was in Africa, and he immediately left uh, to, to go after uh, Phocas. And once he caught on with him, once he uh, caught him, uh, he had his he put his foot under uh, on top of his head, on top of his neck, and uh, he said, "Is this how you rule, wretch?" He called him wretch, and um, Focus said, "And if you were in my place, how would you have done? I mean, would you have done any better?" And uh, he was angry, uh, Heraclius was angry at the time, and uh, he, uh, in his anger, he cut off his head. And uh, Heraclius, the name Heraclius means hero. And uh, basically, the, the judges, uh, 
the book of Judges had a bunch of heroes. Uh, every once in a while, God would uh, fill uh, his spirit. His spirit uh, would fall on, cer on a certain uh, man uh, that would become the hero of that uh, period. And uh, Heraclius, or the, his life re reminds me of three people. And I'll explain to you why. Because uh, it reminds me of Samson. Uh, I don't know if he had supernatural strength, but he did. He did act as a hero, and just as Samson did. Uh, and at times he did the right things, and at times he did the wrong things, like really wrong. But uh, um, I mean, Heraclius actually comes is identical to the name Hercules, uh, which also means he, hero. And another man it does remind me of uh, is Gideon, uh, because um, he was hailed as king. He was he wanted people wanted to be a king, and Heraclius actually became an emperor. And but uh, Gideon refused. Gideon refused to be a king. However, his son uh, uh, Abimelech became king later on, and that's what means uh, Abimelech actually means my father is king. But uh, in reality, Gideon had refused to be king. Um, but what another thing that Gideon did was that after he had cut down the, the Midianites. Um, he borrowed he or he took their uh, jewelry and he made uh, gods again he had cut down the grove he had to, he had destroyed the image of baal and so on but then he uh, made an effort again and it became a stumbling block to israel again <clears throat> so he fell back into sin and um, one thing that heraclius did that was uh, that the people were disgusted after he had become emperor, he he had his first marriage, uh, and he had uh, Constantine as his son, one of the Constantines. Uh, I believe he was Constantine the third or the fourth. But um, when his wife died, he married another woman. It was actually his niece, and the people and the people were disgusted at this point. I mean, prior to that, they held him as a hero. And um, this was the time when uh, Islam became a threat, started to become a threat. I mean, up until this time, uh, the actual threat was the Sassanids, the Parthians. And uh, one of their generals had become emperor. He gave back some lands that he had conquered from the Byzantines, and uh, things went well for a while. Uh, what, for a decade or two? But uh, then came the uh, threat of Islam. And we're going to continue. Eventually, there was a peace. There was an internal revolution within uh, the Parthian Empire where his son executed his father. And uh, soon after that, there was an, uh, there was one of his generals had become uh, king, and uh, he had returned the lands that he had conquered from uh, the Byzantines. But uh, when Heraclius married uh, his niece, he had a son, Heraclonus, which means a little hero. But he fell. He fell out of favor from the people, and there was a there was another battle this time with a new group of people. And wondering what uh, this group was, they were actually the Muslims, the Islam, and they actually lost uh, an overwhelming defeat. I believe that uh, uh, they had outnumbered the Muslims, and uh, they actually, but they lost the battle, and. Uh, uh, after his death, Heraclonus co-reigned with Constantine, his half-brother, but ha Constantine uh, had his, uh, himself had Heraclonus mutilated to uh, kick him out of office. And so did he with uh, Heraclius' niece. He cut off her tongue. 